So we're still talking about timing. And in the last video, I sort of set this geometry up for you right here to indicate something like um, a starting time for doing the timing. I was saying, okay, just supposing we're standing on Earth, we have some technology that allows us to look up at the sun and a distant star, and all in one view, we see the sun and the star, and we're going to call this T is equal to zero for our timing. So before I continue then, um, the artwork always gets in the way of this discussion here. So I'm going to have to redraw it just a little bit because the scale becomes something that's difficult to grapple with here. So I'm going to draw the Earth just like I did before. I'm going to put the little person on it. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the sun extremely close to the Earth like that. And why am I doing that? Well, because I know that any star that I'd like to use is going to be very, very, very far away compared to our own sun. All the stars are just very, very far away. So if I even wanted to you know, some hope of getting the right scale. I would have to draw something like this. It looks like we're getting baked by the sun. I agree. It doesn't look like anything we've drawn before. But again, if I'm going to try to get a star on there, i got to put a lot of distance in there between our sun and the next distant star. And even the scale is just completely wrong, but it's the closest I'm going to get. Okay. So what happens then is nothing, nothing new is going to happen here. Once again, the little person here is going to start rotating like this. But I have to sort of pause on this here because, again, I'm ignoring the Earth's orbital motion, okay? So the person is not going to be in the same position when they get over here like this. The person is going to be something like this where I'm going to have to move the Earth around in its orbit a little bit because that's also going on while the rotation's happening. So I'll sort of maybe draw the Earth here, okay, something like that. And all I'm doing here is saying, okay, in the big scheme of things like this, this is just the Earth following its orbit. So here's sort of the orbital path. It's happened to be here when I started the conversation, but now it's here, of course, and we'll just keep do following this as it went all the way around the sun to complete a year. Okay, but the point is that while this little person's rotating, the Earth is also moving in its orbit. You can't ignore that if you're gonna think about this timing properly. So the little gray person now that I'm gonna indicate is being drawn maybe in this position here, that I was normally drawing, say, maybe over here on this Earth here, would really have to be somewhere like over here, like the Earth would have to have moved a little bit in its orbit, and now that gray person is going to be something like right here, perhaps. That's what will happen when a little bit of that rotation has occurred. The Earth will have moved down here a little bit, and hopefully the Earth would uh, maintain its size a little better than I've drawn a right same size circle. But in either case, by the time I get down here, what has happened? Well, let's draw the green person. Enough time has gone by for the green person here to make it to right here, say. So in other words, the green person is sort of drawn to be in the same orientation as he or she was when all this began, something like that. Okay, so it's on that same line. Okay, so the question is, if you go back up here, remember I was discussing what your field of view would look like. In this high-tech case here, I would see both the sun and the star in a white frame like that. So let's go back to the white frame here. So here's the white frame. And the question then is if I look up now in this position right here, what am I going to see? What am I going to see? What would I draw in my view? Okay, I look up. Well, I'm not going to see the sun because I'm looking up here along this red line over here, and I don't see the sun anywhere. But I do, this is where the artwork and the scale fails, but if I do look up, I am going to see this star. Now, sorry that I have to take my red cursor and curve it up to see the star like that, but remember, the scale is really off. Like, if the Earth's sun distance is like this, there's no way the star would be this close. So I don't know where you are or where you're watching this, but if you're looking on your computer screen, this is hopefully on the right side of your screen, laptop, phone, whatever you're doing to watch it, but imagine this dot is 100 miles away from you hundred miles away to the right. Now just take a minute, what is a hundred miles to the right of you? Another city, a mountain, another state, I don't know, but just imagine the star is there. hundred miles away, that would be even a better scale, although still not the right one. But now if I looked up, and I could probably keep this pointer nice and straight and run into that star a hundred miles away, I would see that, that star first. And so what I would do then in my field of view, I go up, I see the star. And so what's going on here? Well, it turns out that the amount of time that's gone by in between these two positions isn't quite a day. Remember, a day, the 24 hours, is defined as the 24 hours. Remember, that's noon to noon. But I haven't quite seen the sun yet, so this couldn't be 24 hours. In fact, it's a little bit less than 24 hours. And so the number here is something like 23 hours and about 56 minutes. That's how much time has gone by. 
from star to star. So that's our next, that's our new timing bit for us here. So this isn't solar time. That's 24 hours. That's this noon to noon. But what this is, this is star time and it's 23 hours and 56 minutes. Can't seem to get my 56 to come out today. 23 hours and 56 minutes. And it has a name. It's not called star time. It's called this. So first thing, it's not pronounced side real time. It's pronounced Sid a uh, real. So say it with me. Sid a uh, real. Sid a real time. That's how the word's pronounced. And Sid a real refers to star timing 23 hours and 56 minutes. So, so star to star. So you see we have two timing mechanisms now that we'll sort of have to discuss. The first one is, is you know, of course, sun to sun. And that's, as you know, 24 hours or one day. But now we have this other one here called star star to star, which is 23 hours and 53, 56 minutes. And that's uh, one, one sidereal time, I guess, or one sidereal day, maybe, if you want to call it that. So two timing mechanisms we have. Sun to sun, 24 hours, one day. That's what we're used to. But now we have star to star, where we haven't quite seen the sun yet, which is this number here, 23 hours and 56 minutes, one sidereal time. Okay, we'll pick this up in the next video.